I think what the song really means to me is uh, a reflection of my creative journey at the time. A lot of what I was doing at the time was very informative. I felt like I was either appeasing someone or aligning my creative vision to certain things that weren't really representative or indicative of like, who I was and how I felt. So, uh, kind of like a starting point into being who I am, uh, being unapologetically who I am, and that's all artists kind of struggle with putting yourself and your work out there as authentically and as honestly as you can. I put up this guy I met through Instagram digitally. It's kind of weird. He had put up a reel of him playing music and I did a reel in response. And rapping and like doing a verse on the song. Really vibe well because he had worked really well together, surprisingly. So I had messaged him in, in the hopes of meeting up and just seeing where things lead and go to. Because obviously you don't want to make a song with someone you don't really jive with, but finding the right people and the right collaborators is always part of the creative process. We ended up meeting up a few months later to kind of just cook up and do a random sesh. Literally no pressure, nothing came to mind of it. Whatever happened, happened. And within like maybe two and a half hours, we had the core part of the beat done, we had the first verse done, and we had the hook done, which are almost identical to the song. After the demo was completely done, we ended up booking studio time at Notable Studio, and we met the incredible Kara McKinley there. She was amazing, honestly, a great audio engineer. And funnily enough, after a week of me looking for female vocalists, messaging to no avail, she had like kind of voiced up her opinion and then like in a very humble way, like, oh, I can do the vocals for the hook if you don't mind. Like, we'd love to collab on that. And of course, I took her up on the offer immediately. We had a few iterations of that hook with my vocals. And very quickly after, we ended up with what became the final version of the song. So, well, the writing process for No Condolences was honestly as smooth as it usually ever is. Uh, and that being that it wasn't that smooth. The first session is always easy. So you get down either your hook, your verse, or a combination of the two. It's always trying to push that and get the energy from that first session to be uh, encapsulated in the entire song, which becomes the issue. So the second verse I ended up rewriting two or three times. So there's variations which were shorter and longer from one another, but it was on one cold winter day I ended up walking, trying to channel a certain type of creative juice that comes from being outside and being in an environment where you're doing something. So that was the writing process. Getting that and getting an idea for what I wanted a female vocals to sound like on the hook. So in terms of collaborators, uh, I've already mentioned Alex Bletch who did the production for the song, Pierre McKinley who ended up doing the audio engineering, the mixing, and being one of the, the, the lead vocalists on the song. Uh, and I think only possible in a city like Toronto, where you end up bumping into people every now and then, seeing other creatives, sharing other creatives and work, and trying to push for like meetings, meetups. It's funny because Toronto in itself is a huge city, and sometimes it does feel like everyone's kind of disjointed. But at the same time, it is connected a lot of the time in the creative process. Any creative you meet will have a connection to another five creatives you might meet. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a good and wholesome experience, I'd say. Oh, shit. <laughs>